Life before my substance use. Well, that was a uh, it was a simple one. I went to school. I played with my friends in the village which I lived in. I spent all weekends either with my dad or my nan. Had hobbies such as wrestling, something I was really good at. Uh, one thing I truly loved though was was people. I was a very people person and loved socialising with people I knew or just met. I worked in the youth service for a while, or should I say volunteer, where I won the People's Million, which led to a youth cafe being built in town. One of the greatest achievements of my life so far. It was awesome to see my face on TV and the newspaper for doing something that I loved. When I was in college, I went through a really hard time. It was difficult. It was really, really difficult. I was studying sociology, psychology. It was the most difficult year of my life. It got to the point in which it was so hard. I remember opening the envelope on results day. I opened up two U's and two X's. It was it was really hard. It was really difficult. My dad, like I said, you know, my dad expected great things from me. Some and uh, yeah, I didn't achieve them. So it was it was it was a difficult time. I I failed. I felt that I let everyone down. Um, I didn't know where to turn to next. Bryn was referred to Wiseup through a youth group he'd attended for some time. Some workers had noticed a deterioration in Bryn's motivation and could clearly see he was struggling. When I met with Bryn, he had several issues around his substance use and this was obviously causing an impact on his family and peer relations. His education and finances and general well-being were also struggling. Through careful planning and joint negotiation, we developed a care plan which could address these issues. The first part of the journey was to develop a relationship with clear boundaries and trust. Due to the sensitive nature of substance use, this was a vital component to the success of our treatment plan. We worked one-to-one -one with weekly appointments and tried, when possible, to stick to the same appointment times. This, we felt, would help with consistency, which can sometimes be lacking in chaotic lifestyles of substance users. When I was using, I was using a lot. I used to sit in my bedroom all day, every day, from the moment I woke up to the moment I fell asleep, smoking a bong. I'd done some terrible, terrible things to feed my habits. I used to rob off my mother. I used to borrow off my friends and not pay back. It was horrendous. It was horrible. I, um, I had no choice, though. I had no choice at that moment in time. It was the one thing that just blocked out the outside I didn't really care about what I was missing out on in respect to friends family it's a bit tricky to talk about this period of time because um, when I say to you I was sat in a room I smoked that was it that was that was my life we discussed relationships with peer groups who we thought would be appropriate friends at this point in time in order to understand and support Bryn through this really difficult journey. When looking through a friendship timeline, it's often seen that friendships change, change radically when we're dealing with substance use. This was the same for Bryn, and he'd lost touch with most of his close friends. More worryingly, we discovered that he was spending more and more time using alone and isolating himself from the outside world. Once we had discovered a pattern in Bryn's use, we could look to change his behaviour and routine. Again, we had developed a plan together to change the times of use, the people he was using with and how he was using. I remember once, a pivotal moment, I was, it was about four o'clock in the morning maybe, and I, I owed everybody in Port Flevin. I owed everybody in the village I lived in. And I didn't have I didn't have any weed. I didn't have any cannabis. So I I got out of bed and I was practically picking up dirt from the carpet. I was whacking into this bong. I knew I knew in my mind that the chances were it was probably fluff or just, just pebble. I don't know what it could have been. It, could have been. it was disgusting. Working with the youth centre. May, quite possibly, before Wise Up and Ad Action, saved me purely because they were the one that pointed me in that direction. I remember having a conversation with a very close friend of mine, 
I'm in contact even with now. Uh, he spoke about wise up. He spoke about ad action. I was so I was like, no, no, not a chance. I can't, I can't face that. There's no way. And but I did trust these people. I did. So I said, okay, well, you know, get him in. <laughs> I'll have a chat with him. And uh, so that's what happened. That's what happened. I remember it may have had to wait, I don't know, two weeks possibly. And the God, the butterflies in the stomach. I was a bit like, wow. It was almost exciting, terrifying, yeah, exciting because it was almost like a first step into a different way of life, a different outlet. It was, it was, it was, no, it was exciting. It was terribly exciting. Terrifying, but exciting. Working alongside Rich, ah, uh, he's one in a million. Wise up is one in a million. You can't, you can't put a price on Wise up. <laughs> they, they truly did save me from from myself. Uh, it was a roller coaster. It was there were highs, there were lows, and when I say lows, I don't mean in which they failed to do what I, you know, what I needed, but because I had to dig deep for myself, I had to face some fears and realize. Some things which I ignored, that I blanked, that I pushed away. You know, it's not a bad thing, not at all. If anything, it was probably a really, really good thing because I would not have faced them beforehand. Um, the good things, the good things was, I remember, I remember, um, on you know, the daily basis of something happened. I, there was so many times I said, I cannot wait to tell Rich. I couldn't wait, I couldn't wait. And it could be silly things. Yeah, I'm, I'm a teenager. I'm sure you can guess things that, uh, that would have gone on and gone on back then. But I was, I was terribly excited to tell him, get his opinion on it, hear some feedback. Um, yeah, it, it worked the other way as well. Whenever anything bad went, I would look forward to, or if anything bad happened, sorry, I looked forward to telling Rich. I really looked forward to telling Rich because um, I needed an opinion. I needed his view on it. I came to trust him and and what he said. Yeah, the the wise up service is truly, truly one of the greatest things I've ever encountered. And um, if they didn't come into my life, well, I don't know where my life would be right now. Um, I would be quite confident in saying I'd probably be sat in my bedroom <laughs> doing the exact same thing I did back then. Eventually, Bryn's substance use became manageable for him to engage in day to day life. Bryn's journey through this very difficult time for him was not an easy one. The success he achieved during treatment was down to his commitment to change, his honesty and determination. Bryn learned to manage his substance use and become abstinent. So having the f my foot in the door at Wise Up, I, I grabbed every opportunity I can really. I'm taking part in interviews joined some groups outside it was it was good it was really good and then I remember once or I remember what I should say when I I remember driving back one time with Rich and he said to me there's a uh, there's an opportunity coming up uh, for Wise Up an apprentice and I will never ever forget I'll never forget what was going through my head and that feeling in the stomach I was like well I need to have this I need to go for it I Went through a few processes, interviews, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, and when I got there, when I got into it, it was, it was, I had to adapt. There's no point in lying. Like, you know, it, obviously it was, it was a hell of a change. It was, it was it's something that I had to get used to, but I am truly one of the luckiest people be given this opportunity to work with a team that give it their all that have the mindset i look at this i look at the team and i just go well that's where i want to be that's who i want to be bryn stayed in touch with wise up after the treatment completed he was always saying he wanted to help other people struggling with substance misuse again his determination and consistency paid off earlier this year he became the first wise up apprentice Our aim 
really is to employ a trainee for a year and that by the end of that year the person will have skills and competencies to enable them to springboard into the world of work within young people. So in addition to that um, we also wanted them to be able to have a broad understanding of the wider 11 plus services and groups that work with young people and their families um, together with an understanding of how joint multi-agency working is carried out and uh, the importance really to uh, of this to improve the outcomes of those young people and families. And lastly, I guess it's to increase the confidence of the person um, to have the ability and the know-how to work with young people directly to motivate change and development. Um, we're just under halfway through. It's been a huge learning curve on both sides. But we are so pleased to have been able to undertake it. We have great plans for the future of where we're going to offer this opportunity to more and more people. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'm very, very pleased to be able to have Bryn on board. How's it going? When I think about how it's going, I'm doing really, really well. I'm in a great place. My life has started. I feel good. I'm happy. And one of the best things about it is I've been given a chance to work with people that have been in my position and I can now give them the chance to be the way I am now and explain to them that all those thoughts running through your head, the deepest, darkest ones, they're just a stage. They're just a phase and you can overcome it. That's not something that I say with a half heart. I mean it with every inch of my soul and my heart that the darkest of times can be cleared up if you just put your mind to it, if you just tell yourself, yes, I can do this, don't look back, look forwards, just focus, accept that it's not going to be peachy and creamy and maybe sometimes it's going to get really, really difficult but then this is what makes, this makes you who you are, builds the character if you just put your mind to it, just set yourself. You can pretty much do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> you just got to believe in yourself and just understand that there are people out there that are probably going through the same thing that you are, maybe even worse. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be lasting forever. That doesn't mean that your life is going to fit, constantly be dark and where you just focus on nothing more than negativity because it's it's not like that there was a time where i was trapped i was trapped by myself imprisoned and now well now i'm laughing <laughs> everything's good everything's really good i feel clear i feel clean feel happy the time I spend with my friends is so important because I remember that there was a time when it wasn't when I sit down with my nan or any of my family I realize how important it is how much I enjoy it how much I love it I see my sister even my mum positivity is key there's no doubt about it